The ACC commissioner has vowed to keep fighting for as long as it takes. You are Locked On ACC, your daily podcast on the Atlantic Coast Conference. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Shout out to the everydayers, and thank you so much for making Locked On ACC your first listen and your first watch today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts. We're free on YouTube. We're part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. As playoffs wind down, the sports stop sporting like we want them to, but this summer, FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day, all summer long. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. On this loaded episode of Locked on ACC, we will discuss uh, Mike Norvell's comments about the conference. He was asked about the ACC today, the Florida State coach. Uh, we'll talk about the ACC's growth and whether that's sustainable or not. And Kenton Gibbs, I want to start with pretty gosh dang passionate comments made by ACC Commissioner Jim Phillips today. I am Alex Dono. I'm on location here at the Hilton Uptown in Charlotte at ACC Media Days. Uh, I'm from Locked On Canes. Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. So, uh, Kenton, you know, all the times we've seen Jim Phillips speak over the past six months about the ongoing legal disputes with Florida State and Clemson, about keeping the conference together and and vying for survival. I've never seen him as passionate as he was today. Uh, He referred to the legal disputes with Florida State and Clemson as, quote-unquote, damaging, disruptive, and harmful, and he promised to fight to protect the ACC and its members for as long as it takes. Now, I took that to mean... The ACC is nowhere close to settling, Kenton. They're going to keep fighting this, as the commish said, literally as long as it takes to get some kind of a resolution. Yeah, and apologies for looking down at my phone because I was confirming something with one of my sources that's out there as well. You are not the only person who said Jimmy P was fired up today. Yeah, Jimmy P was in a different bag today, which honestly, it's about damn time. We've been waiting on this Jim Phillips to show up. We've been waiting on him to show up with authoritative statements to say, this is where we are. This is where I am. We are not backing down. There is going to be no retreat, no quarter given. We will do whatever we have to do as a conference to fight for our survival. Jim Phillips has always been this mild manner. Oh, you know, we're, we're, we're you're looking at all our options. Well, you know, we're, we're disappointed in their decision, but, you know, well, Notre Dame wants to maintain their independent status, and if they change that, we'll be here. No, make some definitive, put some oomph in it. You know what I'm saying? You you know when this something's got that extra little oomph in it. His statements never seem to have had that until today, which is why I got people blowing up my phone talking about, man, I wish you were here. This, this is going great. It, because Jim Phillips, again, is coming out in a more impassioned way than we've ever seen before. Yeah, and, and something he was very passionate about today, Kenton, and uh, I thought he, he did a good job kind of explaining how, like, they compartmentalize the legal stuff with the regular conference business. But as far as the legal stuff goes, I mean, Phillips, when he talked about how destructive these disputes are, like his greater point was it, it just, it damages the reputation of the conference. And obviously people can argue as to who's to blame for that. Well, the conference is to blame. No, the lawsuits are to blame, but this whole situation, it's damaging to the reputation of the conference. But, you know, he also talked about um, just how, uh, how you separate the the litigation from the student athletes? You know, I thought it was pretty clear the way that Philip said, like, "Hey, we we don't treat Clemson and Florida State any differently than we treat anyone else in terms of the coaches and the players, because coaches and the players have nothing to do with it, right? If it's your legal team versus yeah. the board of trustees' legal teams from these schools, uh, at the end of the day, you can't take that out on the Florida State and Clemson players and on their coaches." And they're still member institutions. At the end of the day, they're still member institutions. This is not a situation where there should be any retaliation. I'm telling you right now, as somebody that works in HR, I can tell you firsthand, it never works out well for the retaliator. Hmm. It does not, especially if those being retaliated against have the type of legal uh, firepower that Florida State and Clemson are working with. It's best for all parties to go along, to get along as amicably as possible outside of the courtroom. And then when you get to the courtroom, fight like hell. Do what you got to do and and all that good stuff. But again, outside of that, those young men had nothing to do with that city. 
Yeah. I don't remember uh, DJU saying, hey, I don't want to play in the ACC. If I come back, y'all got to go. Yeah. I don't remember Patrick Payton saying, hey, I, 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 I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm, I'm not an ACC type of guy. I'm more of a Big Ten guy. None of the players had anything to do with that, nor did the coaches. So it wouldn't be fair to to punish them or to, you know, have a situation where um, you're basically making their lives harder for the sake of what the Board of Trustees has done. The Board of Trustees does not run things by the players and vice versa. That's not how this goes. So, you know, it's it's it makes sense to say, hey, we're disappointed by this. It's not ideal, but it is what it is, and we'll move forward from there. Yeah, Jimmy P today was finally talking like a commissioner who knows if we don't defend what we've got, this entire thing could come into jeopardy, right, when he talks yeah. about fighting as long as it takes. Now, something, Kenton, that he did emphasize today was because there have been a lot of rumors and reports about, oh, is ESPN, are they going to drop the ACC if and when Florida State and Clemson League, they've, they've got that look-in provision coming up for 2025, where if ESPN really wanted to, they could just walk away from their TV deal. They have that option coming up in 2025. And uh, and Phillips, you know, he talked today saying that uh, that the 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 uh, relationship with Disney, who of course, of course owns ESPN and ACC Network, he said uh, it's never been stronger. "Quote: Our partnership with ESPN is not going away." He said. He also added that ESPN is as motivated as the ACC is. He says when it comes to generating more revenue. So specifically, I could tell that. Phillips was talking about some of the specific bullet points that people bring up. Of course, the lawsuits and the relationship with ESPN. He says that relationship has never been stronger than it is right now. Obviously, Jim Phillips is incentivized to say that. So I want to start yeah. there, right? Like yeah. we're, we're obviously sitting in a situation where this is not an objective third party saying, hey, our relationship is as strong as ever. And even I am not, you know, to be seen as the arbiter of truth in this situation. However, when you look at the ACC's TV deal, in comparison with all of the other conferences, I am sorry to tell you, ESPN has them raked over. ESPN has no reason to discontinue. ESPN is winning out of the deal. Right. They're winning out of the deal. You are not having to pay as much for anything. Where's the ACC's fine bar? Where's the ACC's Marty Smith? Yeah. They don't. And, and this is not, and again, this is not to denigrate the folks over at ACC Network. They do a fantastic job. This is not saying that anybody is less talented or a lesser personality or anything like that. I'm saying from top to bottom, the ACC is getting less from ESPN than the other conferences that they are in a deep relationship with. So what motivation does the does ESPN have to say, hey, y'all aren't generating enough eyeballs? We're gonna clip all of them. Because if you look at a lot of ESPN's lowest rated games, it's the ones that they put on ACC Network. That's just yeah. the reality. It's the ones that they put on ESPN 8, the Ocho, or only online on the Plus. If you put ACC football on TV, people are going to tune in. People are going to watch, and the numbers have bore that out for quite some time. So when I look at this, I struggle to find a situation where ESPN says, you know what, we got a sweetheart deal. We know we got a sweetheart deal. We got them locked into this sweetheart deal till 2036, but we're going to end it early for the sake of, well, your two top dogs aren't there anymore. So what that we're still making out like bandits? We don't want to make out like bandits if it's not with, with Clemson and Florida State in tow. That does not make sense. It doesn't job with reality. Now, uh, there was another update earlier this morning, uh, probably not so coincidentally from Pete Thamel of ESPN, on when Florida State and Clemson might actually get out of the ACC. And it's not as soon as some of you hoped. You want to keep it locked right here. Alex Dono from Locked on Canes, Kenton Gibbs from Locked on Wolfpack. We're only getting started on this brand new episode of Locked on ACC. You want to keep it locked. And I already know you're keeping it locked to FanDuel. Guys, we're making money. We're having a great time. I had UFC bets over the weekend. I've had uh, international soccer bets up the wazoo in recent weeks. I love sports, and I know that the sports maybe aren't sporting as much as you want them to this summer, although football's going to be here before you know it. Uh, but all I have to do is go to FanDuel, and FanDuel lets me keep the sports going whenever I want. And this summer, 
FanDuel is hooking up all customers with a boost or a bonus daily. That's right. There's something for everyone every day all summer long. You can head over to FanDuel right now. Bet on who's going to win the ACC. Bet on the over-unders. It's FanDuel.com. Start making the most out of your summer. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Thank you so much for making Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. For your second listen, make sure to check out our other shows. I host Locked on Canes. Kenton hosts Locked on Wolfpack. And, of course, with ACC Media Days, the ACC kickoff going on here in Charlotte, we're going to be loaded with content throughout the week. So, uh, Kenton, I woke up this morning to a pretty significant update from Pete Thamel of ESPN, who's uh, one of the more reliable sports reporters in the business, quite frankly, uh, because there's been a lot of chatter. We did talk about it on this show about a month ago based on some of the reports that were out there. There's been a lot of chatter that Florida State and Clemson were strongly considering, especially Florida State, making a formal declaration this summer, a formal declaration that they were leaving the ACC. Now, that formal declaration wouldn't have been much more than a formality because they still have ongoing court cases out there that would really decide when they can leave the conference. But there was all this talk about formal declarations being made. And then Pete Thamel wrote on his ex account this morning, have been told by multiple sources that there's no expectation for Florida State or Clemson to notify the ACC they intend to leave by the August 15th deadline to depart after the upcoming year. That would be the deadline to declare intentions to exit for the 2025-2026 year. So based on that timeline, Kenton, uh, the earliest Florida State and Clemson could or would get out would be for the 2026 football season. Hope oh, you're muted. I'm shocked. I'm so shocked. I forgot to turn my mute off, Donald. I'm shocked. <laughs> I'm shocked. I, I, I'm so I'm flabbergasted. I'm taken aback, aghast, if you will. If only we would have known this. If only we would have said, hey, this did that again, the timelines that y'all are kicking don't really match up. And the most interesting thing about this is how many folks that screamed and yelled and shouted, oh, the we're the, we're played our last game in the ACC. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we'll be going by next year. Hmm. Ain't that so interesting? If only somebody told you court takes time and it's not Judge Judy, and even if it were Judge Judy, you would still have to have a lot of – Judge Judy is a small claims court. This is different. This hits differently when you're talking about tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Very different situation. So, you know, the the ACC and their legal battles with Clemson and Florida State kind of dragging on here, not a shock, not a surprise, not something I look at and I'm like, oh, my God, like this is – this is just a, a, a all out. Um, this is a, a twist that could only be on days of our lives because I, I never saw this coming. This was very predictable. It was right in front of you if you weren't wearing um, orange or maroon shaded glasses. That's just what this was. <laughs> yeah. And, and even uh, Bud Elliott, who covers Florida State. Um, so, you know, you, you could maybe say he's a little bit biased towards FSU on the Cover 3 podcast recently said he thinks the earliest they get out is 2027. Like that would be the earliest they would start a season with a new conference. And honestly, uh, Kenton, like you and I both agree they're going to get out. Like we know yeah. if any FSU fans want to get angry at us, like why are you defending the ACC so much? We know you guys are getting out. There's no question about that. Uh, but it would also it may be to their advantage if it takes a couple of more years because if, if the landscape really is what's been reported in recent weeks that the Big Ten and the SEC aren't keen on further expansion right now, two three years from now that could change. Not to mention Kenton, assuming Florida State and Clemson don't win in court by such a large margin margin that they get out for free, we assume there's going to be some kind of a buyout. The longer this thing drags out, the cheaper the exit fees would be because those exit fees would go down every single year as you get closer to the expiration of the ESPN contract. So it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if it does take two or three more years to get out. Well, it it would be the worst thing in the world, according to some folks. It would be. You know, having to stay in this backwater conference, there's nothing good here. The ice ain't cold. The water ain't wet. Ain't nothing good about the ACC. You know, ACC Media Days probably only has one row of media there because nobody cares about the lowly old ACC, according to some folks. And yet, lo and behold, you know, like I said, there is definitely a cheaper to keep a dynamic at play here. 
there's definitely a situation where everybody keeps talking about Clemson and Florida State can't come back. I am betting dollars to donuts. If they lose, if this case goes defensively in ACC's favor, they'll be sitting there happy tails right there saying, hey, yeah. hey, big head, how you doing, Wake Forest? Hey, Boston <laughs> College. Y'all all right? No, no, no. We was just playing. We were just kidding. It was a goof. It was a goof. I'm sorry, guys. It was a goof. So, you know, I'm not – I'm not really too keen on on you know saying definitively one way or another a, a thing will happen, but I do know that if then statements are very true. If Florida State and Clemson find that smoky gun, if they find that moment where they get to walk out freely, they will. But Jim Phillips has made it clear he is going to fight. He is going to put everything that he has behind this thing legally into it, and that's all there is. Yeah, and he, he was shot out of a cannon today, truly. And a couple other things that Jim Phillips talked about, um, and it's funny, Kenton, like you, you talked about how animated he was today. He didn't really get to the good stuff until like 12 minutes into his opening address. For the first 12 minutes, I'm like, man, this guy's going to put me to sleep like he usually does. And then all of a sudden, he started to talk about the lawsuits. I'm like, all right, I woke yeah. up. He woke me up, but you know, prior to getting to all that, Phillips was talking about the conference growth for the ACC. Uh, he noted that the ACC surpassed seven hundred million in total revenue last year. That was the first time they've ever done that. Uh, the annual payout per school was up to the highest it's ever been at forty-five million. He said the conference will continue to aggressively evaluate all areas that can enhance their financials. And interestingly enough, Kenton, he was asked about private equity. And yeah. he he said, like, I'm not going to get into the specific conversations he's had with, you know, um, university presidents and member schools and all that. So he didn't divulge any specifics. But it sounds to me like, you know, Phillips is very cautious about getting into the private equity game because, you know, he had a, a pretty good quote saying I'm paraphrasing here like, well, nothing's free. Like everything comes at a price. Like when exactly. you're talking, it, it, it's not as if they're these billionaire uh, archangel investors are just going to swoop in and say, "Here, uh, I'll just, you know, I'll pay you hundreds of millions of dollars with nothing expected in return." Like he, he seems very cautious of that. But Phillips did admit they have definitely put everything on the table. Like there have obviously right. been discussions. He and uh, and board of trustees out there and university presidents have done their due diligence on the option of going the private equity route. Right. And I mean, it, it would be it would be him being derelict in his duties if he didn't explore every option to keep the band together, right. pay everybody what they need, keep everybody happy. But with that in mind, it's it would also be derelict in duties if he was just like, whatever the first thing is, whatever the new hot thing is, we got to go. We got to roll it. If the Big 12 is doing it, we got to do it to keep up. No, you don't. No, you don't. Sometimes you can watch other people make that dumb move themselves. You know, there's a an old proverb. I can't remember who said it or where I heard it at. But a fool learns from his own mistakes. A wise man learns from the mistakes of others. You get what uh, I'm saying? Yeah. Like, if you can watch somebody else go forth and take that risk and say, you know what, private equity is the way to be. Okay. And then if your conference is decimated because of it and all of you all are forced out and it's then ran like a business instead of a sporting conference, then what? You know what I'm saying? If, if things then get worse than what we currently have with the bi-coastal conferences and all that, then what? What are you looking at then? Well, it makes more sense fiscally for these players to play 15 games a year. Um, I beg your pardon? What's wh Why would we do that? for, for Y'all don't know what football entails. We don't care. There are 85 of them on scholarship. They'll be all right. You see what I'm saying? Like You don't know what's going to happen in these situations when you're going forth and assuming, hey, whatever whatever gets me the best return right now may not be best for you in the long term. Well, you mentioned Bicoastal Conference, and Mike Norvell was actually asked about that. And I, I, I don't know who this reporter was, but I give this one reporter credit because he asked Mike Norvell, is it weird to be doing interviews right in front of an ACC logo considering what's going on at university right now. I, I thought, to his credit, Norvell handled that question extremely well. We'll get to that and so much more. We're not done yet, folks, on this brand-new episode of Locked on ACC. You want to keep it locked. Thank you so much for making Locked on ACC your first listen and your first watch today. 
Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. It's called Locked On Sports Today, and it's here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today, now available on the free Fire TV channels app. So, uh, you know, Kenton, I, again, I go back to something Jim Phillips said today, and that's having to car- compartmentalize that, you know, these these legal disputes, student athletes, coaches have nothing to do with it, right? Like you you can't take anything out on Mike Norvell or his players. Today was Florida State Day at ACC Media Days. Uh, Clemson will be here later this week. Like it's certainly not Dabo Sweeney or Norvell's fault in company. And I also think on the flip side of that, I think Mike Norvell handled it pretty well because as you would imagine, there were a lot of questions coming his way about the current ACC disputes. So here's a, a clip I took today of Mike Norvell. Uh, first, he was asked if it's like sustainable to have you know a, a bi-coastal conference to have all these time zones involved. And then he was also asked a very blunt question about whether or not it's weird to be doing interviews in front of an ACC logo. How sustainable do you think these coast-to-coast conferences are, especially only two schools going out? Yeah, I mean, that's not, you know, for my, my opinion, doesn't matter in any of that. But it, um, you know, ultimately, it's uh, you know, we were able to add three teams that uh, you know, I think are, are very uh, unique in, in their own right and, you know, have talented, great tradition. Um, you know, it's, it's one that uh, I think is going to continue to, to to push up the ACC for what we're trying to do and where we're trying to go. And uh, you know, it's going to be a very competitive league. You know, you look at a group like SMU when their conference a year ago. Um, it was a very great team returning with, you know, you know all, all three of those schools have, have wonderful coaching staff. So uh, I mean, this is a competitive league, and, you know, top to bottom. I mean, it's, it's, it's consistently shown that, uh, you know, as good as any league in the country, in my belief, uh, of just, you know, what it takes. And you know, look at the scoring margin of victory, I mean, within this league, it's going to be competitive, and I think those three teams will come in and, and be able to, to continue to enhance that. Is it weird for you to be sitting here in front of an agency logo of, of a conference you guys are trying to, uh, to leave? Uh, we got a great. We have a, a great history, and, uh, and you know, obviously, the uh, time here at the ACC and continue to push to, to elevate this conference and what we do and, and how we uh, push to represent. I loved how, uh, like Norvell, first of all, handled those questions with a lot of grace. And I like how what he was asked, is it weird in front of the ACC logo? Like he like looked over at the ACC logo. No, it's, it's not weird at all. They, they, you know, the Florida state obviously has accomplished a lot in the ACC Kenton over the years, including winning the conference just last year. Yeah. And and this is a situation where, why would it be weird for him? Yeah. It does not, people don't understand what type of maniacs football players and coaches are. Okay. I'll give you a prime example. This is well documented. You can ask Coach Doran about it when you see him, all that type of stuff. I tore my bicep in practice. I didn't know that I tore it. I taped it up and kept practicing. Like, the the, the part of your arm that's responsible for pushing and pulling, by and large, was gone. And I was just like, yeah, you got to keep doing what you got to do. People don't understand that mentality is not just in me because I'm, like, insane and a maniac. It's in most football players and coaches. So, with that being said, it doesn't matter if there's an ACC logo behind them, if there's a MAC logo behind them, if there's an American Conference logo behind them, if there's a Big 12, SEC, Big 10. Put the ball down. Do what we got to do. You got to be at your lifts. You got to go to class. You got to be prepared. You got to go to film study. You got to eat right. You got to get your rest. That's all that matters. If you're in the SEC, do you need to rest less? No. If you're in the Big 10, do you need to eat less? No. If you're in the Big 12, do you need to study more? No, all of these things are, are, you know, they're very much so functions of at the end of the day, ball is ball is ball. And and to say anything else or to make it a big situation or, or big stink about, hey, you know, there's a lot going on in the conference. Are you sure this is where you want to be? I think it's a fool's errand and no coach, no smart coach, at least, would do such a foolish thing. Yeah. Now, uh, th- throughout the week, at some point, Kenton, I'm going to have to fill out my media ballot here for who's going to win the conference, among other things. Now, uh, I think we may know who I may fill out to, to win the conference, but I, I, will, <laughs> I will definitely give the Seminoles uh, consideration, given that yeah. they are the reigning champions. And I, I do think that they're a very well-coached and talented team. And we're going to be seeing other teams throughout the week. Clemson will be here this week, NC State. Miami's going to be here 
on Wednesday. I did have a chance to talk to a couple of SMU players today, Kenton. We're going to have those interviews on our YouTube channel throughout the week, including uh, Preston Stone, quarterback of SMU. Now, Stone said something, Kenton. This is going to challenge us to do our research throughout the week. Preston Stone said they've got the best wide receiver core in the ACC. So I'm, mm. I'm going to take that challenge. I'm going to take a look at what his guys have done, what the rest of the conference has done. We will evaluate throughout the week. But he's got faith in his pass catchers. In terms of returners, I don't think that there's too much of an argument for anybody to say that they're, they're beating SMU in that regard. But you and I's questions about – here's the thing, right? I love a quarterback with confidence, or as they call it, mock. Yeah. I love it. I yeah. love it. Here's the thing, though. The reality is you or, nor I ever questioned their pass catchers. At no point in time did you or I say, we're not sure if their guys can win one-on-one on the edges out there. It was right. the big guys. It's the buffet busters that will determine the difference and whether or not they come on the scene and pull a Vegas Knights and take it all away in their first year or – if they're like a lot of soccer teams that, you know, you're a big soccer guy, promotion often leads to relegation. <laughs> That's just how it goes. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting to see how this thing shapes out and plays out. But I don't I don't think that I would disagree with him in terms of saying he has the best pass catchers. But it's a lot like Carl Anthony Towns saying that he's the best shooting big man in the NBA. Cool. But, like, there's more to being a big man than that. I – Hey, listen, press this stuff. Y'all know I love me some SMU. Y'all know I love me some yeah. Portland Press, baby. But it's not about the, the small guys on the outside. I do think that if all things were even and I could trust their offensive line to, to stand up to ACC defensive lines week in, week out, hey, more power to you. I'm I'm there with you. We're here, Preston. We're here. But I'm not sure about that. That's why there's a question, not because of the pass catch. Yeah, well, we'll continue our coverage of ACC kickoff throughout the week. He's Kenton Gibbs from Locked On Wolfpack. Make sure you check out his show. I'm Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. Make sure you check out Locked On Canes as well. We're here for you each and every day, part of the awesome Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.